So the, the main question we try to address here is uh, basically what would be the impact of quantum computers on uh, symmetric cryptography? And we care about this because, well, basically some physicists uh, think they can build a quantum computer, so I'm not going to argue whether that's true or false. Maybe it will be in five years, maybe 200, maybe never. But anyway, it's something we, we take seriously in the crypto community and uh, we try to, to find out what would be the impact of this and how to have security that would resist uh, this kind of event. So uh, in a nutshell, what would computer, co quantum computers do? Uh, the idea is they, they, they would be able to solve a class of problems much faster than uh, classical computers. So we don't expect they will break all problems, but they will break some problems uh, much faster. And uh, that, that's interesting for us because in cryptography, we like hard problems. And we like to have crypto systems that rely on hard problems. So it's, uh, it's important to, to understand whether those problems are still hard for quantum computers or whether they become easy. So in the, in the field of public key cryptography in particular, that's something that's been uh, studied a lot. And we know there's a short algorithm that can break uh, the factoring integers and uh, also can break discrete logarithm. And because of this, a lot of public key crypto system would be broken by your quantum computers, uh, such as RSA, Diffie-Alma, and elliptic curve cryptography. And there's been actually a very large effort uh, in the public cryptography community to design new algorithms that would resist uh, these kind of attacks. On symmetric cryptography, uh, we don't have uh, that much knowledge about what would happen. Uh, we know that there's uh, an algorithm uh, by Grover that uh, basically can do exhaustive search of an n-bit key in times uh, two to the n over two. But um, we don't know whether that is the, the only attack uh, we have. We don't really know uh, what else uh, there could be. Uh, this is the wrong version of my slides, but I'll try to make do with it. Uh, th there is uh, something else we know, uh, something more than Grover's algorithm, and that's um, a nice result by Kuakado and Mori. And they showed in 2012 that uh, we can break the even monster cipher with uh, quantum queries. So uh, I'll try to explain a little bit how this works. So first, what is the even monster cipher? Uh, it's a nice construction. Uh, you start from a public permutation P, and the idea is to build a block cipher, and you build your block cipher by just XORing a key at the beginning and at the end. And this construction is very simple, and you have a security proof. So it's, it's very nice. It's, uh, it's not really used in practice, but from a theoretical point of view, it's very nice, because it's quite simple and has a, a security proof. And it uh, turns out, um, so before looking at uh, quantum attacks, I'm going to talk about classical attacks. So there are many different ways to attack it. Uh, of course, they don't break the security proof, so they only reach the same uh, security level. And uh, one, of the, one of those attacks is called the slide with a twist attack. And what you do is you start with 2 to the n over 2 known plain text xi and the corresponding ciphertext yi. And what you do is you assume that in this uh, large set of plain text, well, with high probability, two of those values will have difference exactly k1. So we assume we have x and x prime with difference exactly k1. And then when we encrypt them, uh, what happens is uh, the first step in even monster encryption is to XOR the key k1, so that basically swap x and x prime. So what we have is encryption of x is p of x prime plus k2, and encryption of x prime is p of x plus k2. So k1 goes away, and now when you combine those two equations, you can make also k2 go away, and what you get is encryption of x plus p of x is equal to encryption of x prime plus p of x prime. And this is something that's easy to detect now, because you can just text, take all your known plain text uh, x, now you just compute uh, yi plus p of xy, you compute this for all your data, and you look for a collision. And you know that if you have a pair with a specific difference, it will be a collision. So every time you get a collision, you get a candidate for K1, and you can try them. And that's, uh, that gives you an attack against the even monster cipher. So this, this one is a classical attack. And basically what uh, Kuakado and Mori did is uh, they built uh, a quantum version of, uh, of this attack. So, um, yeah, I, I won't go too much into the details of quantum computing here. Uh, basically, I'll only see quantum algorithm as a black box, and because it's quantum, there's probably a cat somewhere in the box. Um, so uh, the, 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 the way this attack works is uh, the basic model is you're going to give a quantum oracle to the adversary instead of just a classical oracle. So you can send superposition queries to the encryption oracle and get a superposition uh, of corresponding outputs. Um, before going further, I'd like to say it's a very strong model, of course. Uh, we don't really expect such, such attacks to be uh, actually practical. Um, but also, on the other hand, it's hard to argue that uh, we cannot do this kind of attack in practice. Like, if you have a smart card that uh, encrypts messages with some secret key, 
we don't know what happens if you send the superposition of messages. We don't really expect to get the superposition of outputs, but it's also hard to say there are no quantum effects and everything is completely uh, classical. So uh, we don't really have any model in between the completely classical one and this completely quantum one, so it's, uh, it's still interesting to look at this model. And also as a general thing uh, in cryptography, we like to look at very strong models and proof security in very strong models. Uh, so, uh, so I think it's very interesting to, to really look inside uh, at what happens in this model, even though it's not really a direct threat on, uh, on the, the cryptography we use. Uh, it's also important to understand that it's quite different from uh, what we do with, say, uh, Shor's algorithm. When you try to break RSA with Shor's algorithm, you just take the public key and you build a quantum circuit out of the public key. And then you run this uh, quantum circuit. But the adversary only takes classical inputs. In this model, we assume that the adversary has a quantum box that does encryption with some secret key. So it's really uh, a different, uh, different thing. So um, what we're going to do in this model, we're going to use a very nice algorithm called uh, Simon's algorithm. That's basically a case of uh, quantum period finding. And what this algorithm does is you start from uh, this, uh, this assumption that you have a function with a very specific property, that this function has collisions if and only if the input difference is some uh, fixed value s. And the goal is to recover this value s. And this is something that's relatively hard for classical algorithm. Uh, it takes time to the n over two, but for quantum algorithms, you can do it in time uh, linear in n. So I will not go into the details of how this works, but basically it works. Uh, we can also do it in uh, slightly weaker cases. So I said the, the initial Simon's algorithm, you assume you have collision if and only if the difference is s. But in our case, we will sometimes have something a little bit weaker, that we have collision if the difference is s, but not only if the difference is s. Like there are some extra collisions that don't follow this exact difference. And if those extra collisions are not uh, structured, they are mostly random, then the algorithm uh, will still work. So you can look in the papers for, for the details on this. So uh, now, how do we break even Mansour with this? Uh, the idea is to do something very similar to the classical attack. It's basically a quantization of the classical attack I showed earlier on even Montour. So you're going to build a function f. You build it uh, like this. You do encryption of x plus permutation of x. Um, and so you look at this function. And uh, the important thing is this function satisfies f of x is equal to f of x plus k1. And that's just the same thing as I showed in the classical attack. That's just because when you write down what this function is, it's something like this. And if you input x plus k1, you just swap out those two terms. So of course, uh, it, there will be collisions. And so this is exactly uh, what we want for Simon's algorithm. So now we can run Simon's algorithm of this function. We recover k1, and that's how we break uh, the even non-source cipher. And now this attack only takes like linear in n. So it's a, a very efficient attack. So that's what uh, was known so far about quantum attacks on uh, uh, symmetric cryptography, and now I'm going to show that actually it's a lot more general. We can break a lot of modes of operation using uh, the same techniques. So I'll start with uh, CBC Max, so I think everybody knows what a Mac is, but the important thing is uh, the security notion we're going to use is security against chosen plain text attacks, so that's uh, very classical. So what you do is you have some oracle, and the adversary can send messages and re receive uh, the corresponding tag. And the goal of the adversary at the end is to uh, predict the tag of a new message, a message that was not sent to the recall, and you have to predict uh, the message for this tag. So that's the classical security notion. Uh, now when we try to move to, the, to a quantum uh, setting, so uh, what we want to do is change, replace this classical recall by a quantum one. So it means now the adversary sends a superposition of messages and gets the corresponding superposition of uh, MAC values. But we also have to change a little bit what it means to do a forgery. Uh, because if you send a superposition of messages, you can just send a superposition of all messages. But now we don't know what is a new message because you already sent everything to the Oracle. So instead of asking for a new message, what we ask is uh, if you make k queries, you have to create k plus one valid uh, uh, tags and message at the end. So that's the security notion we, we use and it's due to uh, Bonnet and Zandri. So, um, now let's look at CBC Mac. So it's a, a very uh, common Mac. It's used in a lot of protocols. Uh, it's a pretty old one, and it comes with a security proof. So it's a, it's a good construction. And what you do is basically you start with your message, you encrypt, you XOR another message block, you encrypt, and so on. And at the end, uh, you encrypt again. Uh, so I'll skip the classical attacks. Uh, 
So how do we do a quantum attack on the CVC Mac? So the main step of the attack will be to define a function f with uh, good properties. That's how all uh, those attacks are going to work. And then we're going to run Simon's algorithm on this function, of course. And the way we're going to build this function here, we take two inputs, a one-bit input and a one-message block. And what we do is we expand this one-bit input to a full block, and we concatenate uh, the other block. And so when you uh, write out what happens when you, you, you evaluate this function, so if you start with b equals zero, you're going, the Mac is going to be just encryption, encryption of x plus encryption of one. And if you start with bit one, you have encryption of encryption of x plus encryption of zero. And if you look at this function, uh, you can see that there is a hidden uh, period in this function. If you put, if you change uh, the bit b and you put a difference in x, that corresponds to uh, the difference in those two terms here. So if you put difference uh, one in the first term and delta in the second, where delta is encryption of zero plus encryption of one, you get uh, collisions. So it's, it's, a, it's basically a differential attack. You put difference uh, one here, and here you put the corresponding difference to, to cancel it. So, uh, so this is nice. Now we can apply Simon's algorithm. We're going to recover this value, and turns out we can use this value to make forgeries for exactly the same reason. Now you just put, again, this difference, uh, corresponding difference here, corresponding difference here. It cancels, use collision, and uh, you have forgeries. So this is how we can uh, break uh, CVC Mac using uh, quantum queries. So the main structure uh, is like this, and all the attacks we have in this paper follow this same structure. So the most important thing is to uh, build some function uh, f with a hidden, structure, uh, a hidden uh, delta in it that can be used later. So that's where you have to, to be a little bit clever to see how you can build this function, how you can uh, build your inputs to uh, your uh, Mac and how you have to combine maybe the outputs. And if you do this uh, nicely, well, you, you have such a function, then you use Simon's algorithm, you recover delta, and then you use delta to make uh, forgeries. And uh, yeah, an important thing is uh, you need to make a quantum implementation of this function f in order to run Simon's algorithm. So of course you need a quantum version of your recall and you also need sometimes some extra bits of circuit that you're going to, to combine with it. So we can use the same kind of ideas on, uh, on many different uh, constructions actually and that's, that's really something uh, a bit surprising that we, we can really break a variety of uh, mode of operations. So I'm going to show a few of them. So uh, this one here is uh, PMAC. So it's a parallelizable Mac, and uh, so the main structure is you encrypt in parallel all your message blocks, but before encrypting, you have to uh, XOR some uh, secret values delta, and then you basically XOR the outputs and uh, encrypt again. And if you look at this uh, structure here, if you put on, uh, only two blocks of messages, it's actually uh, the same shape as CBC Mac, so you can just use the same attack. Uh, we can also do uh, an alternative attack if you uh, just for the sake of variety maybe. What we can do instead if, uh, is uh, build a different function where we start with one block of message and we just repeat it uh, twice. Then when we, uh, when we compute the Mac of X concatenated with X, uh, it turns out that again you have uh, some structure, you have collisions if you uh, input difference delta zero X or delta one. That's just if you think of it, if you have X and X here, and if you XOR delta zero, XOR delta one into this value X, well, you're just swapping around the, the first two uh, encryption blocks. So of course you're going to have collisions. So this is a, an alternative attack against PMAC. And the nice thing is it's also going to work if you put an encryption block uh, here. And this happens in some authenticated encryption modes. You have an extra encryption here. And in this case, the CBC MAC attack is not applicable to PMAC, but this variant uh, will be applicable. So it's nice to have uh, a number of uh, different ways to attack them. So next I'm going to look at uh, GMAC. So GMAC uh, is basically the authentication part of uh, GCM. And it's a, a carter Wegman uh, Mac, so you have some polynomial evaluation and then you XOR uh, an encryption of the nodes. Uh, I'm not going to go into those details. Uh, the important thing is, again, it looks very similar to CBC Mac when you look at the picture. You basically uh, XOR messages and apply some function. So you really want to do the same kind of attack. And so you're going to define the same kind of function and it turns out you have again that uh, f of bx is equal to f of b plus one x plus delta. So that's the same kind of structure we want for Simon's algorithm. Um, however, it's a little bit different because uh, there is a nonce here. So every time we query this oracle, we're going to get actually a different function. It's not the same function we're going to query all the time. 
So that makes the attack a little bit different. But even though all those functions are different, they all have the same period. Because the nonce only, uh, only appears at the end of uh, the computation. So if you have collisions before you, uh, you input the nonce, the, the structure of the collision doesn't depend on the nonce. And thanks to this, we can actually apply uh, Simon's algorithm. So it's not exactly Simon's algorithm because we have a family of functions, but it's basically the same thing and it still works. Um, also, it's nice to, when you think about uh, this structure, uh, this works because the nonce is at the end. If you would put the nonce somewhere uh, closer to the beginning, those attacks would, uh, would not really work like this. Uh, we have also looked at uh, authenticated uh, uh, encryption with associated data. Uh, the basic idea is you have uh, uh, two inputs, a message and some associated data A, and you want to encrypt and authenticate the message and only authenticate uh, the associated data. Um, and something uh, interesting is in a lot of uh, AEAD construction, what you do is you first process your associated data independently of the nonce, and then you process the nonce, the message, and something that comes from uh, this uh, 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 processing of the associated data. And because of this, a, a lot of those attacks will still be applicable because we will just attack the part where you process the authenticated data. And so if you have collisions before the nonce comes in, then uh, we can just do the, the same thing. Uh, so, uh, to summarize, there's um, a lot of modes that we can break with this, really. Uh, so, we can break uh, a lot of modes that are really used, that are standardized and really used, like uh, CBC Mac, PMAC, GCM, OCB. Those are really important modes, and turns out they are not secure if you can do uh, quantum queries to the Oracle. We have also looked at Caesar candidates, and uh, it turns out we can break uh, eight of them, so that's also a, a non negligible fraction. So, there's really something happening, uh, happening here. Uh, if you compare this to the situation with encryption modes, uh, surprisingly, it's very different. Uh, most encryption modes are actually secure against quantum queries. So a lot of authentication modes are broken, but encryption mode seems to be secure. So I don't really have a good explanation for this, but there's really uh, something different happening. And it's also important to see that uh, even though we can break a lot of them, uh, it's still possible to build a uh, secure max, right? It's not that the model is too strong and we break everything. Uh, just uh, before concluding, I'd like to talk about something a little bit different. Uh, everything so far was about modes of operation. Now I'm going to talk about cryptanalysis techniques. So I'm looking inside the block cipher. And I'm going to look at uh, slide attacks. So a slide attack is a class of attack where you look at an iterated block cipher and you assume that it's uh, iterating exactly the same function. So you repeat the same permutation at every round and you extol the same key at every round. And if you do this, uh, there's a nice attack where the idea is to find a pair of inputs x, x prime so that they are basically shifted uh, by one round. So the encryption starts one round later and ends uh, one round later. And, uh, <clears throat> and it turns out it's possible to find values uh, with uh, this, this kind of relations. And if you want to do a classical attack to find this, uh, well, I, I, uh, I will skip the details, but basically we can detect this uh, use, uh, by finding collisions. And, if we, and this attack can also be quantized. So it's also possible to build a quantum version of, it, of this attack. And uh, what we do is we build this, uh, our function in this way. So it's, uh, it's actually a little bit different from the attacks uh, I showed so far. The function is now defined in a different way. So we use a one bit input plus one uh, block of data. And what we do is if the bit is zero, we're going to take x plus p of encryption of x. And if the bit is one, we're going to take x plus encryption of uh, p of x. And now if you try to write down exactly what this makes, uh, you can see that uh, if you have f of zero x and you write down uh, what you get, it's actually the same as f of one uh, x plus k. So you actually have a period also in this function. And the period will give out uh, a secret key k. So if you have a block cipher with this uh, very strong structure, uh, well, uh, I should say that actual block cipher usually avoid this structure because we know there are issues with it. But it's still interesting to see that if you have this structure, uh, you can actually break this in time that's only polynomial in N uh, using quantum queries to, to the construction. So uh, to conclude, uh, the, the, the first message is that uh, Simon's algorithm actually breaks uh, real problems. And that's something that was not completely obvious uh, from the, the, the quantum side uh, of this. When Simon's algorithm was first introduced, it was uh, a very important result because 
it was the first case where we had a quantum algorithm that was exponentially faster than classical algorithms. But the problem that it solved was considered as very artificial, not really something uh, that, that, that was important in real life. And turns out in cryptography, this very problem is actually important for, for a lot of systems that we use. So that's, that's something uh, interesting here. And in terms of sub applications, uh, we can break a lot of MAC modes and authenticated encryption modes with attacks that takes only uh, linear time. And we can also improve some cryptanalysis techniques. So the, the really big result is, uh, well, there's not just Grover algorithms. If we look at the security of symmetric cryptography against quantum algorithms, there are actually uh, better attacks than Grover's algorithms. So uh, I think it, it's, uh, it's worthwhile looking at it and seeing uh, really what we can do. Uh, on the other hand, this attack is not really practical in the sense that it uses a very strong model, so we don't really expect that it will break actual uh, implementations of, uh, of crypto. And uh, this will conclude my talk. Thank you. <laughs>